What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the Eldorado project, we have the Russ Wormont Designs RS1 front suspension and the RS1 rear shock. All right, so welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado project. I'm so excited for this install. We have the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 front suspension and the RS1 rear shocks. You guys already know I'm a huge fan of these. I have it on the 2020 Road Glide Special. I did install videos for those. Don't worry, we're gonna be doing an install video on the Eldorado project. So I do have a lot of projects going on at once right now, as you can see. We have the Native Custom Baggers fat tire going on. We have the Lindo rotors along with brake pads. You guys have probably already seen those videos by the time you see this video, but I'll walk you step by step how I got to this point to get these installed. Uh, anybody that's seen this bike already, already knows that uh, I can't stand the suspension that's on here right now. It had the two inch lower on the front and they had 11 inch shocks on the rear. Every turn that I was taking, I was scraping pipes. It was driving me nuts. Not a huge fan of that. Now if you have air right and you're able to lift up your bike and drop it low, hey, that's a big difference but when it's just a fixed suspension and you're scraping pipes, that's just not a comfortable ride. And especially if you add on rider's weight or any weight on the back, that's just gonna drop it down even further. And when I had the Tap Performance two and a two headers and the 50 cal zombies installed, last thing I wanted to do was scrape pipes. So what I did is threw the stock suspension back on just to raise the back of the bike up a little bit. It still had the two inch drop on the front. Couldn't really do anything about that until we got these in. So I'm excited to get this front suspension on and I'm excited to get this rear suspension on. A lot of people, they like to do the rear shocks and kind of forget the front, but I tell you right now that these two pair together, they're made for each other. Enough of me running my mouth, let's get these unboxed and install on the bike. Now you wanna make sure that your bike is strapped down because it is gonna move around while you're doing this. So I'll start off by removing the front fender. You have two screws on each side. Now I do have the Hogworks wrap front fender. So I have the screw with a nut on the back. Now if you have the stock fender, your screws will screw directly into the fender. There's no nut on the back. So to remove this panel, you have a screw on each side and it's a 530 seconds hex bit. So for the tank, I did remove the two screws on the front and two screws on the rear so I can scoot it back just so I had enough room so I can take this dash panel off. So I'll go ahead and cover up the tank so the panel and the tank do not get scratched. So I did remove the two screws on each side. It'll just pop out just like that. Just turn your ignition knob to the left to have more clearance. Now you do have a connector on the left and a connector on the right. Now the release tab on the left connector is on the top and the release tab for the right connector is on the bottom. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the entire fairing. Now you don't have to remove the fairing to access all your screws to get everything off, but because I wanna show you on camera what's going on under here, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. So like I said, you do not need to remove your entire fairing in order to access your screws. I just wanted to get it out of the way so I can show you what I'm doing on camera. You wanna be able to access this pin screw on the top, and then you have these two pin screws on the bottom. So first thing I'll do is remove the brake calipers on each side. You have two screws holding them on, and they're a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. 
So I will be changing out the brake pads along with the rotors to all new Lindahl brakes and rotors. I'll cover that more in depth in a separate video. Here you have the wheel speed sensor guide. You just want to make sure you keep track of that. All right, so now it's time to remove the front tire. You just want to keep track of your spacers. I have a spacer right here. These groove lines are facing inboard, so I'll make sure I install it the same way. Then you have your axle and on the other side you have your wheel speed sensor you want to make sure you install this the same way you don't want to have it flip-flopped then you have your axle nut so what i'll do first is break loose this axle nut for this axle nut i'm using a 15 16 deep socket and then you have a pinch screw on this side on the bottom i'll loosen that up for the pinch screw, I'm using a six millimeter hex bit. So here I'm using a center jack to raise the front of the bike up to get some tension off and then I'll knock this axle through. Here I'm using a rubber mallet to knock the axle through. You don't want to damage your threads. And I'll just use a screwdriver to pull the axle out the rest of the way. Just make sure you're keeping track of your wheel speed sensor and your spacer. Now I'm not keeping this axle because I am changing it out to the native 25 millimeter black flush axle. But if you are keeping yours, just make sure you keep everything together with your spacer, your washer, and your nut. Now from here, I'll go ahead and roll the tire out. So looking at the stock wheel on the right side, you do have a steel bearing here. And if you look on the left side for your ABS or wheel speed sensor, you have a plastic, looks like a plastic clear bearing. It's still a solid bearing. You just have this plastic here. So I'll slide the axle back through. That way, when I'm loosening up the pinch bolts, it doesn't slide down on me. So I'll start on the right side. I'll loosen up these two bottom pinch bolts, and then I'll loosen up the top. Now you just wanna loosen these up. You don't wanna take them out all the way. And to loosen these up, I'm using a quarter inch hex bit. So when you're loosening up this last pinch bolt, just make sure you have a hold of your fork slider so it doesn't fall on you. Here I'm just taking some bicycle tubing just to protect my fork slider. If you are using a vise, you don't want to tighten it down too tight. I'm just getting it down nice and snug so I can get this screw out. So you have a screw on the bottom of the fork slider. It acts as a drain plug, but it also holds the components together inside. I'll take a screwdriver and I'll slide it in this hole right here, just so I have more support while I'm turning it. And I'm using a 12 millimeter extended hex bit. So this screw is just spinning, which tells me that this is probably a progressive mono shock tube design inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, get that fork cap off so I can get this disassembled. So here I'm using a vise along with the Jim's USA fork holder. Just helps keep the fork in place to get this fork cap off. I have a 19 millimeter hex bit to take this fork cap off. I'll set that on there. I'll take a rag, I'll wrap it around here because this will be under some spring tension. So this is just gonna help catch that spring when it jumps up, if it jumps up. Let that all drain out. Just set this back on here and just let it drain out.
So I'm using a couple of extensions with a half inch deep socket just to get to the damper tube down here. And then I'm using my 12 millimeter hex bit for the screw on the bottom of the fork slider just to get that screw out so I can get everything else to release. I'll go ahead and get this flipped around so we can get that retaining ring out. So here you have your retaining ring. I'll go ahead and pop this out. You can use a picking tool or a screwdriver, but if you are using a screwdriver, just be careful that you don't scratch your tube. Now that I have that retaining ring out, I can go ahead and slam this down to get the fork slider to separate from the tube. Make sure you get your lower stop. And I'll let that continue to drain out. So here's the difference between the two springs. This is your stock rebound spring. You wanna have two that are exactly the same. So this is what comes stock on your Harley Davidson suspension. This is the rebound spring or spring that just came with the progressive monotube shocks. You definitely do not want to mix these up. So just make sure you have two of the stock rebound springs. It's gonna be the exact same thing for the other side. I'll finish taking out this pinch screw. So I don't know exactly what suspension is inside of here, but this one is having a hard time coming out. So the rebuild kit does come with a new screw and a copper washer. Now if this copper washer does get stuck in the lower fork slider, just make sure you get that out. You don't wanna have two copper washers, you'll end up with a bad seal. So what I'm gonna do now is just take this, I'm gonna flip it upside down and just let it drain out. All right, so we can see what kind of suspension he had in here. All right, so from here, Remove the fork tube bushing. The slider bushing. There's spacer. And the old seal. So I'll take some brake cleaner and I'll spray out the lower fork slider and the tube. Now from the stock setup, you're gonna need the rebound spring or drop spring, as well as the lower stop from each cartridge. Now in the Drag Specialties Rebuild Kit, you get everything you need in order to do a fork seal change. Now some of this kit you're not gonna use. I'll show you exactly what you're gonna need for this setup. Now with the seal, you want this lettering facing up. If you look on the bottom, you have this metal ring. You want that facing down. So in the RS1 kit, you do get some fork oil, 10 weight. I'll use this to lube this up and get these installed. Now with the slider spacer, you do have a flat side and then a beveled side. You want this beveled side down. You have your slider bushing. Fork tube bushing. You wanna just spread this just far enough so it slides over and it goes right here. Now with the seal, you do have a metal ring and then you have numbers or lettering. You want those numbers or lettering facing up. I'll slide it on from the top. So you have your seal with your numbers or lettering facing up, your fork slider spacer, fork slider bushing, and your fork tube bushing. So here I have the lower stop. You have this smaller hole and this larger hole. You want the smaller hole facing down. All this does is cup around your cartridge at the bottom like that. So I'll slide it into here, 
It's just gonna stop right there. It's not gonna go any further. I'll take this, slide it down the lower fork slider. You wanna set this on top of a padded surface or rag. That way, when I drive this seal, nothing is getting damaged. Just make sure you take everything off your table so nothing goes flying. So you just wanna drive this down far enough where you can see that internal ring where your retaining clip is supposed to sit. The kit comes with a new retaining ring. Slide that over and just pop that in. It's gonna be the exact same thing for the other side. Now, before I install the cartridge system, I'll make sure that the fork tube assembly can move freely without any friction or binding. So these cartridges are very simple to install. There's no left or right, no rebound or compression side. Some suspensions are rebound and compression. These act as one, so it doesn't matter what side you put them in. Everything comes preset from factory. You can give them a call or you can talk to them online. They'll get you dialed in with your rider's weight. So they send you these ready to drop in. Now you can make small adjustments up here when this is already installed, which makes this an awesome setup. So this sleeve here just protects your spring when it's inside the tube. That way nothing gets damaged. Great setup, pretty easy to install. Now before you install your new cartridge, just check all the threads, check everything, the seal, make sure nothing is damaged. I'll take my rebound spring, just slide it onto there, and then I'll slide it into the tube. So I'll take a quick peek into the lower fork slider just to make sure that that lower stop is still lined up. So I'll thread the top cap of the cartridge into the fork tube. So when you're threading this in, just apply some pressure, just make sure that you're not cross threading. So here I'm using a spanner wrench to tighten it the rest of the way. I just taped up the ends so I don't damage the fork cap. There's no torque value on these. You're just gonna turn it until it stops. You can go off your service manual for the torque value on your fork two plug, but these are a little different. Just get it down nice and snug until it stops. Now when you are tightening this down, just double check your clicker, make sure it's all the way to the left because when you are tightening it down, you can accidentally bump your clicker. So now I'll just flip the fork tube over and where I took out that screw on the bottom side, I'm gonna pour in six ounces of 10 weight fork oil. Now I'll get the screw in with the new copper washer. Now the manual does recommend that you use some Loctite 565 thread sealant, but I'm just gonna use some blue Loctite. Now the service manual does say to torque this screw down 30 to 37 foot pounds but on the Russ Wearmont Designs instructions, they want you to torque it down to 28 foot-pounds. It's gonna be the exact same thing for the other side. Now you just wanna make sure that you're installing these on the right side. The lower fork slider with the pinch screw is gonna go on your right side. So on the back of this fork bracket, you want that tapered area about midway. 
and then you'll have this all lined up here. So on the back of the fork bracket, I have it lined up midway on that tapered area. And then all the way around, I have it lined up just below that tapered area. So there is a tightening sequence to these pinch screws on the fork bracket. You're gonna tighten the lower pinch screws first. You'll tighten the upper screw, and then you'll tighten the lower screw. And then lastly, you'll tighten the upper pinch screw. Now the torque value for these pinch screws is 14 to 18 foot pounds. Now it's not gonna be completely lined up all the way around. You just wanna make sure you get both sides as equal as possible. So I'll slowly lower the bike onto the tire until I get the holes to line up. So with this new flush axle, I'll add some anises. I'll also add some anises inside the right axle hole and inside the spacer. I'll also add some anises to the inside of the wheel speed sensor. Now I'll get this flush axle in. Don't forget your spacer and your wheel speed sensor and which way they were orientated. My spacer with the groove lines was facing towards the rotor. And on the wheel speed sensor, this rubber part, which is the wheel speed sensor, the spacer was outboard and that rubber was inboard. So on the wheel speed sensor, you want it to touch and then just back it off a little bit. So the axle is gonna thread right into that flush axle cap. So to tighten this down, I'm using a 5.8 socket. Double check that wheel speed sensor that it's not turning when you're tightening it down. Now Native Custom Baggers has a torque value for their axle and it's 50 foot pounds. Now if you're installing your stock axle for this model bike, the torque value is 70 to 75 foot pounds. Now the torque value for this axle pin screw is 18 to 22 foot-pounds. So now I'll remount the left brake caliper and if you haven't done so already make sure you thread chase these holes and also clean off your mounting screws. Now for your left caliper you do have this wheel speed sensor guide. You want to make sure you install this the right way. You should see some wear marks from the screws on the mounting bracket. It'll tell you which way it was orientated. And once again, I'm using a 10 millimeter 12 point socket to tighten these down. Now the torque value for the front caliper mounting screws is 28 to 38 foot pounds. Once I get the brake calipers mounted on, I'll go through it one more time, check the clearance between the tire and the fender, and also the rotors, calipers, and brake pads. So I am on a lift, so I'm gonna use a scissor jack to raise the rear of the bike up, just enough to get tension off the shocks. So I'll cover up my exhaust first, so I don't scratch anything up. I'll remove this bottom bolt first, and then I'll take out the top. Just make sure you have a hold of your shock so it's not slapping around. It's gonna be the same thing on the right side. You have two bolts, and they're a three quarter inch socket. Make sure you clean your bolts off of any old thread locker and you also want to thread chase your holes. So 
So here I have the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 shock. If you've seen my previous videos, you already know I'm a huge fan of these. Now before I install the rear shocks, I'll go ahead and inspect them, make sure all the hardware is there and everything is serviceable. So I'll be mounting these with the reservoir down. You have your black knob and your red knob. Now your red knob, I wouldn't adjust this. This is mainly for extreme riding or off-road racing. It comes preset already from factory in the wide open position. So I would just leave it as is. Now your black knob is for your everyday riding. It comes all the way to the left. It's your softest setting. And then from there, you can click it to the right and make your adjustments from there. So I'm gonna use the original stock bolts that came on the bike minus the washer. So you have these tapered washers. You just wanna make sure that this tapered side is pointing towards the pivot ball. Then you have another tapered washer and you want that tapered side going towards the pivot ball. And then I'll add some blue Loctite. I'll get the bolt started. So I won't tighten this down all the way. I wanna make sure I get this all lined up with the swing arm. So here you have your misalignment tab. This is gonna push your reservoir in. That way you have clearance between your saddlebags and your shocks. And you wanna make sure that this nut is facing outboard. I'll take the original mounting bolt. I'll slide that in. You have a larger tapered washer. You'll slide that on tapered side towards the pivot ball. And then you have another tapered washer that's gonna go on the other side of the shock. Just make sure that tapered side is going towards the pivot ball. So as you can see, this misalignment tab pushed this reservoir in. You have clearance between the inside of the tire and you'll also have clearance between your saddlebags. So the torque value for these shock bolts is 63 to 70 foot pounds. So you're just gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. 